Alright guys, so we're going to start going through, today we're going to look at photosynthesis. So let's get a little bit of background um, before we dive straight into photosynthesis. Is We're looking at these things called autotrophs. Um, auto means self, trough is a fancy way to say energy, and so it's self energy capture. Um, and so how are they doing that? What are the physical sources from their environment that they're actually collecting this free energy from? Um, so we've most commonly heard of photosynthetic organisms where they're going to use light energy um, to kind of generate photons, accumulate some, some energy that way. Um, and then we're going to create chemical energy in the form of glucose. Um, so that's the most common. We love to break down glucose as actual organisms. Even if you're a plant, you still got to break down glucose to turn it into ATP. So keep in the back of your mind, the ultimate thing that we're trying to get to is ATP because that is what's going to be actually used for cellular work. We can't use light energy for cellular work. Um, we can't even like take glucose and use it for cellular work. Um, the only thing we can do is ATP. Um, so we've got to go from light energy to glucose to ATP um, to actually get ourselves working as a cell. A little less common um, is a chemosynthetic organism. So these are chemical-based capture of free energy. So these are coming from small inorganic molecules that are present in their environment. Okay. Um, so little compare contrast of those two things. Um, where synthesis is typically solar energy. Um, again, you're using carbon dioxide water um, to create our sugar, glucose, our oxygen as a byproduct. And again, that comes from light energy. The, the chemosynthetic organisms, um, these typically come from like underwater volcanoes, those hydrothermal vents. Um, so if you like picture that location, it's way, way deep at the bottom of the ocean. You're not going to see any light. Um, so they had to kind of adapt and figure out, hey, how can I take these carbon-based molecules and synthetic, you know, organism-y molecules and actually create um, some energy out of it. So still trying to figure out a way to get some sort of a carb um, and then a different byproduct. So um, heterotrophs are what we're going to contrast with the autotrophs. We're not going to get to that yet, but just to introduce you to that idea, once we've got that glucose, now we're going to take that glucose um, as a heterotroph and we're going to metabolize it um, and we're going to create ATP energy. Okay. Um, so when we have oxygen, we're very, very efficient um, and we can do cellular respiration. Um, however, if we don't have oxygen, we've still got to find a way to be able to create um, ATP energy. Uh, so a lot of times we'll see it happen through this idea of fermentation. It's way less efficient. Um, if you're a eukaryotic organism, um, it's going to create some pretty mean after products. Um, but again, that's the absence of oxygen. So we'll get to that one eventually, but I just wanted to kind of introduce you to that idea. Now, how does this all play in together? Well, we've got light energy entering a system, um, and typically in the chloroplast, we see photosynthesis occurring, and we are producing, you know, the organic molecules such as glucose that are going to enter the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, we're going to be able to do cellular respiration and create that ATP, which is going to do cellular work for us, and then um, we're going to be able to uh, do work and release heat. So what we'll notice is we're actually recycling um, the uh, matter in this and we are having the energy flow through it. Uh, so what we'll find out is the reactants, okay, as in the things that are reacting um, to photosynthesis are actually the products of cellular respiration and then vice versa. So for instance, um, the reactants of photosynthesis are CO2 and H2O. Well, they came from byproducts of mitochondrial cellular respiration. Um, vice versa, the products of um, photosynthesis are now the reactants of cellular respiration. And so they just kind of flip back and forth. And we can see this cycling of matter as well as the energy flowing through. Okay. Big reminder, we like to make sure we know um, ATP is our ultimate goal here. We are trying to get to ATP energy um, because that is the only thing that can actually do us um, is that ATP. Um, so this is what's doing cellular work for us. 
again, we can talk about it being a, when we build ATP, it's anabolic, it's endergonic, we're capturing it in the form of ATP. Well, we originally got that from a catabolic reaction. We also can talk about how we break ATP and it phosphorylates. When it phosphorylates, we're, you know, pulling that uh, phosphate away and attaching it to something um, as a placeholder for where to release energy to. Um, and then we've got, last but not least, um, you know, the energy in this is also flowing through um, as well as the matter of is recycling. So ultimate goal here, we're going to make ATP energy and that allele respiration and fermentation. But we are talking about photosynthesis today. So photosynthesis, big overview is you've got light and that light is going to be converted into chemical energy. Chemical energy we can with, it's tangible. It's not some photon that's some abstract idea. It is a tangible thing that the cell can then manipulate and extract energy and transfer energy from. Um, so the whole big deal with photosynthesis is that we have to figure out a way to get these photons stored energy into chemical energy, okay? Um, so this can happen, this can only happen in the presence of light um, because the plants need that photon energy to transform carbon dioxide and water um, into carbohydrates like glucose. So it's important for us to know the uh, formula. Uh, I would be able to write this if I were you. Um, so we've got six CO2, that's carbon dioxide, plus six H2O, that's water and obvious, and then light. Okay, sometimes you'll see this written where it's over the arrow, but regardless, it's just saying it's in the presence of light. And that's where we're going to get photons from. Um, we also have products of glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen, um, which is 6O2. Now, we tag these things with like the little sixes. Remember your chemistry. That's because we need to balance our equation. Okay, so plants um, then use those sugars um, that we are creating and they do cellular work with those sugars. They send those sugars to the mitochondria, they knock out cellular respiration, they make some ATP, and then they're able to do the normal processes of a plant, okay? So uh, let's look at the major organelle that photosynthesis is occurring in. Um, it's the chloroplast. Uh, so a couple things about the chloroplast. It's nice and green and pretty. Uh, part, it has this outer membrane Okay, um, and it has an inner membrane, okay, which looks like tiny green pancakes. Um, these inner membrane uh, things, um, and they stack up together to make this thing called a granum, okay? Um, the surrounding jelly-like stuff in the spaces of those thylakoids is called the stroma, okay? Um, so important that we know those three concepts. You're going to want to have a picture of where things are occurring when we start talking about the actual process. So we also can have a different, here's a different picture of that. Um, we have these thylakoids here. A stack of them is a granum. We have this jelly-like aqueous fluid. It's called the stroma. You've got an outer membrane and your inner membrane. Um, and then inside of the thylakoid is this area called the lumen. Um, and they, that kind of helps the pancakes from like flattening on each other. Um, and then we've got the lamella, which is like, a little spider webby type thing holding those granums together. So big takeaways here, we wanna make sure we know thylakoid, we wanna make sure we know granum, and we wanna make sure we know stroma. So dotted all over those thylakoids, and the reason they're the green ones, um, are these photosynthetic pigments. And photosynthetic pigments are absorbing the light energy um, so that we are then going to provide the energy to carry out the actual process of photosynthesis. So this is our ultimate source of energy. This is our initial input um, of energy that we're going to see throughout all of our cycling um, of matter. So we've always got to have an input of energy. It's coming from the sun. Okay, the chlorophylls are probably the most important ones. The best one is chlorophyll A. This is the one that directly transfer, transfers photons into chemical energy. He's the big guy. He's carrying the team. Um, he does all of the jobs. Chlorophyll B, on the other hand, um, is uh, a little less um, active as far as the direct. I'm putting energy into chemical energy. I'm storing energy in the bonds of, of a tangible chemical um, element type thing. 
Um, it just kind of helps transfer those wavelengths to chlorophyll A. Okay, some other ones are these things called carotenoids, um, and the carotenoids, they can absorb some blue light, some green light, some violet ranges, um, whereas our chlorophylls are absorbing red and blue and violet range light. Okay, so they're actually very effective, and these guys, um, these chlorophyll B are something called antenna pigments. Um, so I want you to picture an antenna, you know, it's this big thing that sits on your roof and it like brings in uh, you know, wavelengths and signals and things like that. Um, so that's exactly what these pigments do is they're, they're not, they're not doing, um, the majority of the work. They're not actually taking the photons and linking them to a chemical, um, to provide it with chemical energy. They are just pulling in these wavelengths and accumulating more energy so that chlorophyll A can actually do its job. Um, so chlorophyll A is the pigment directly in the light reactions that is doing photosynthesis. It's like the one thing that no matter what, we have to have chlorophyll A. If all the chlorophyll A went away, we would be in a lot of trouble. So two stages of photosynthesis. Um, we have the light dependent reaction. Now this takes place in the thylakoid membrane. Um, and this is the, the photo phase. So it kind of says it in the name, light dependent. It requires light. Um, this is what's going to make ATP and NADPH for us. And it's going to use light energy to produce that ATP and NADPH. Um, so this one is on a thylakoid. It is using different reactants, which we're going to get to in just a second. Um, and the whole purpose of this one is to make us ATP and NADPH. Again, those two things are tangible chemical energy for us. So we can work with that, okay? There's also light independent reactions. So the Calvin, please make sure you know that the Calvin cycle is a fancy name for that, okay? These take place in the stroma, so that jelly-like part of a chloroplast, okay? This is the actual synthesis part, okay? Um, so this is where we're actually gonna build the sugar and actually be done with photosynthesis and produce ourselves some sugar, some C6H12. O6. Okay, so let's look at those um, pigments again. Um, where and when is this happening? Well, um, chlorophyll A is operating in a wavelength of about 400, um, 425 maybe, um, and it does really efficient uh, light absorption when we're looking at those particular wavelengths. Um, what we notice though is it does not do a good job in this green area. Um, so this is actually why. This is actually why we have um, green plants because it's reflecting, it is reflecting the color green instead of absorbing the color green. Um, so it kind of tricks our eyes a little bit. Um, the carotenoids, they use a little bit different wavelengths. Chlorophyll B, again, is an antenna pigment, um, but he's really efficient at helping us with some of the blue light. And again, we're giving, all we're doing is we're accumulating all of these wavelengths of energy and we're giving them to chlorophyll A to do its job, okay? So during photosynthesis, the chlorophylls are helping absorb those free energies in the form of photons and boosting those electrons because we're going to find out we really love charge, um, boosting those electrons to have higher energy levels for photosystems one and photosystems two. Okay, so let's look at where those chlorophylls actually live. If you look at the thylakoid, you'll see that a thylakoid, okay, has its own little membrane. What we notice about it is, look, check this out. This is looking like a phospholipid of sorts. Um, and so it has its own little membrane, double uh, bilayer, um, which is going to be helpful. And it's dotted with these little chlorophyll pigments, okay, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Okay, so um, again, these little pigments are what are doing the light absorption. Okay, the pigment molecules have this large head section that is directly exposed to the light, and this is the part that's actually taking in those photons and like manipulating them so that they build up that charge. Um, the hydrocarbon chain is there to help us create a bilayer. Okay, all right. Um, we're going to get into the light dependent and light independent reactions in just a second, um, but I'm going to pause this one and start the next one.